Hey gang, we are at the Queen of Heaven Catholic Cemetery in Hillside. We're back here again, and today we're going to pay respects to a victim, one of the two victims of, probably two victims of Drew Peterson, very infamous case here in Chicago. Drew Peterson, a man who craves media attention. He's in prison right now. We're gonna talk about this story. Let's go for a walk to the grave of Kathleen Savio. He was a very smooth, a smooth liar. Very insecure, very narcissistic. But he became a good liar because he was in narcotics early in his career. And he had to meet women and lie. So you know where this is going. Wife number one, Carol Brown, high school sweetheart. They had two sons. What happened? Infidelity. Divorce. Wife number two. Her name was Vicki Connolly. No kids. There was a stepdaughter that came into the marriage on Vicki's side. Daughter previously. Same thing. We have domestic abuse. We have infidelity. We have insecurity. We have a really bad marriage going on. So, Vicki says, I want out. Just like Carol. Vicki said, we're going to get a divorce and I'm going to get an attorney. And Drew said, well, you're not getting any of my money and you especially aren't getting my pension. And if you do try to get it, I'm going to kill you. Basically, if you try, I could kill you and make it look like an accident. Well, guess what happened? She didn't get the pension. She didn't go for the pension. And that is probably why Vicki is alive today. Now let's bring in the third wife, Kathleen Savio. Two more sons, and the marriage goes down the tubes. 18 domestic violence calls to the house, and same pattern. Can you see a pattern here, guys? Except that in this case, it was a little bit different. And the way it was different was that the divorce was proceeding, and it was heavily contested. And Kathleen said, you know, I want, I want what's due. I want the custody of the kids. We've got to support the kids. I want half, half, half. It's the way it works. Drew wasn't having any of that. He's like, there's no way. And guess what? All of a sudden, Kathleen was found dead in the bathtub. Can you believe that? Just by some chance. Dry bathtub, no water, curled up with a gash in the back of her head. One inch gash. Well, what do you think would normally happen? Well, what happened in this case, because Drew was with the Bowling, Bolingbrook Police Department, and you know, the guys stick together. They really did not do a, any kind of an investigation or forensics. They really did not collect any evidence. And they ruled it an accident. And on we go. Well, in the meantime, while all this was going on, he was already on to the next woman, which was Stacy. And this was all going on during the divorce proceedings and probably the affair going on before. She was in her teens. And unbelievably, well, 
I should say, not surprisingly, two weeks before the divorce was final, you know, that's when it happened. That's when all this went down. The pattern is the same. Extreme control freak, violence. I think it was said that Stacy had to, well, he had, he had tracking software on, his, on her phone. He would make her bring home the receipts from the grocery store and then he checked the timestamp and he tried to figure out if she was there or not. All, all that kind of stuff. It was like being in prison in your own house. So yeah, the same thing, the same thing was happening. So, guess what? All of a sudden, Stacy Peterson disappears. Who knows where she went? The shadow knows. Well, now things were getting, you know, too many, too much stuff happening at the same time. Now we're going to have to start opening things up. And I'm going to kind of focus on just a few things that stood out to me with the case. I'm not going to get into the whole trial and how this whole thing, the House of Cards, came down. Because the House of Cards did come down for Drew Peterson. But let's just start with this. Just a few pointers. Just before Stacy went missing, Drew said that she called him up on the phone and she's like, Hey, uh, Drew, honey, I'm leaving with another man. And... By the way, I'll, I'll leave the car at the airport so you can, you can have the car. And I'm going to play you a little excerpt on that. Do you realize how far-fetched that sounds? It sounds far-fetched, but it happens. So I really can't answer for where she is or what she's doing or anything like that. What did she say to you that night in that phone call? Basically, uh, she found somebody else and she was leaving. So uh, and told me where uh, she left her car. Uh, she told you where she left her car. Why right. would she do that? I guess uh, she didn't want it, so she wanted me to have it. So coming back, Drew's stepbrother, we find out later, admitted that he helped him move a blue container. Some say it was a drum, some say it was a, a carton. And he said it was warm to the touch. And he really, he really didn't figure out you know, until you put the pieces together later, what was really going on. But he said, oh my God, I may have inadvertently helped Drew get Stacy's body out of the house. United States Navy hospitalman killed in action in Korea. Look at this. I'm going to take a little break here, guys, in the story, just to pay time out. I don't plan this, I just walk and I try to stop for a veteran or two. Wow, this is a beautiful, beautiful statue here. And I'm sure that is in his likeness. This would be, I believe, Anthony Sun, 1951, passed away. Killed in Korea, killed in action. He was awarded the Purple Heart and Silver Star Medals for Bravery. Thank you for your service, Anthony. So sad. Well, see if we can fix this up just a little bit.
All right, let's carry on. So the brother comes forward, you know, later. His name's Tom Morphy, and he's like, oh, my God. And by the way, Drew told me to go to the airport with her phone and place a phone call to him. <laughs> Hello? No pun intended. So we've got a new player that comes into the picture that is a man that I got to tell you, he, he's the Wyatt Earp. I'm going to say he's the Wyatt Earp of this story. He's cleaning up the town. He is the sheriff in Chicago. James Glasgow even looks like Wyatt Earp. And this guy was... A, was like had a dog was a dog with a bone and he just said no 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 we're we're gonna get this we're gonna get this prosecuted correctly here and he did he went all the way and you've got to give him kudos because he left no cards on the table he put it all in and he did it right and he did it by the book and he did it professionally and he wasn't going to let this guy get away with this murder. So what does James Glasgow do, the prosecutor? Well, he gets that permission, the court order, to come here to Queen of Heaven Catholic Cemetery to get Kathleen Savio exhumed. And they take a close look. And it's homicide. A lot of sloppy work before, but not this time. And shortly thereafter, Drew Peterson is arrested. I have to tell you, their defense attorney team are, well, how do I want to put this? Clowns, stage actors, uh, there's really some really bad form shown by these guys. This team, I think they had six of them. And they thought, you know, they loved, it seemed like they loved the media attention also. And they would get up in front of the microphones and just do some horrendous things, unprofessional to say the least. And I will play you a little clip right now. Of the Stacy factor in this trial. Who? The Stacy factor. Who? Stacy who? Stacy who? She's on your witness list. Oh, oh that's oh, Stacy. Stacy. <laughs> We're hoping she shows up. She yeah. shows up. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. she'll show if up. She shows up. If she got the subpoena. Yeah. Does anybody think she's really alive? I Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. she's alive. Well, there's no sign of life. I mean, if she hasn't communicated with anybody, nobody's heard from her. Nobody's no seen sign her. of life. I haven't life. talked to my wife in weeks. <laughs> for years, for years now. Yeah, I haven't talked to my first wife started. in 15 years. So the trial is going, and another thing that pops up is Drew's best friend comes forward to tell everybody how he was told months before that Drew's an expert at disposing of body and how bodies, how he would do it using scuba weights because of the gases and you know the container, whatever it is, would come up. It wouldn't stay down, whether underwater or underground. And he goes into all this detail about scuba weights. And when all this stuff was hitting the fan, Drew calls him up and says, hey, get over here. And he comes over to help with the kids and stuff and says, he trips over this big bag and what's in there? Scuba weights. So just crazy stuff. So another gaffe that they made, which was probably the biggest gaffe of the trial, the defense team, these experts and movie stars, they call on the stand Stacy Peterson's divorce attorney, and he gets on the stand. I don't know what they were after with that, but he gets on the stand. He goes, oh, yeah, she told me like the week before that Drew told, she knew, she was covering for Drew, that yeah, Drew had killed Kathleen Savio. And that, 
you know, the alibi is no good because, you know, I was the alibi and I lied. So that just blew the whole case open. Well, blew it up for the defense. And from there it was a guilty verdict. A quick, a quick guilty verdict. And thank God for 12 intelligent jury people. So Drew Peterson has a tissy fit in his sentencing hearing. He got to have to speak his mind and he's glaring at the the jury, giving them dirty looks, all this drama. Again, playing up for the media. And fast forward a little longer and he tries to hire a, a, a hitman from prison to kill Glasgow, the prosecutor. And the inmate was hot, was wired. Everything was recorded. Another 40 years for Drew. So now, now Drew, you know, Drew is gonna, Drew is gonna die in prison. No ifs, ands, or buts, it's game over. I think he was before gonna have first eligibility at 93 years old, but now he pretty much blew it. He blew it. So we are approaching the grave here of Kathleen. Let's see, it's right over here. So when I came here earlier, I did, it was uh, pretty bad shape, really bad shape. There was a a flower pot full of white stones and dust and everything it was it was really bad so I spent about a half hour here and cleaned it up so it looks a little better loving mother and sister Kathleen Savio June 13th 1963 to March 1st 2004, always in our hearts. Well, it's a very sad story. And Kathleen, with her two sons, hopefully they're in good health. I think they've resolved. I know one of them, I believe, has resolved. One of Drew's sons has resolved that his father did it. And we all know he did it, and hopefully, uh, well, justice is being served. So we hope that Kathleen is resting in peace. And I brought a flower for Kathleen. She has nice, some older flowers here, but they're still in good shape. So, rest in peace, Kathleen, rest in peace. And I have a few, a few more thoughts as we walk away here from Kathleen's grave on this story, just in retrospect. It is said, it was said by Drew's attorney, who by the way quit at the end of, at the, just before the sentencing hearing, that he believes when Drew dies that she will be found. And he's quoted as saying that several times. If you, if you watch the show, Grace and Abrams, Abrams makes a really good point. He kind of corners them and says, Hey, you know what? You've you've said that kind of like you know your attorney privilege you can't say but you know you know where she is and when Drew dies then she's going to be found, I think. And he said, "You know what? That really rules out that she ran away with a boyfriend. Why? Because you you, you would have used it as a defense. So we know that you're saying she's dead. So tell us and he won't tell." He's just going to go with his attorney privilege to the bitter end. 
And you know what? I'm going to say if he's watching, if you're watching, you're going to go to your grave someday. And your grave marker will be, your grave marker will be that you, you were a professional. You kept your attorney privilege and not be that you were a man and stepped up and told us for her kids where she is. And that's the kind of person he is. And that's the kind of people we have out there. Well, Drew Peterson will die someday. And he'll probably take the secret to his grave. However, he may not because he craves media attention. It may just turn out next year he comes out of the woodwork and goes on that little tour in the orange suit and handcuffs in the van to multiple locations to try to remember where he buried her. Watch for that, gang. But if not, then we're going to have to wait for the day that Drew Peterson dies. And I do believe that when that happens, we will, we will get news of where she is. Rest in peace.